Hello and welcome back to the LFC Transfer Room for another edition of the Debate Room. Our last one went so well, we thought we'd give you another one after yesterday's stream. If anyone was on that stream, then you wouldn't know why we are doing this Debate Room. It was a hot topic and we thought we'd get on it straight away. But today I'm joined by our two debaters, Mr. Jack Edwards and Mr. Owen Cummings. Jack, I'll start with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. It's a lovely Sunday afternoon where I'm stationed here in America. Um, should be a very interesting stream. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm. I'm interested for the battle that's to come. Yeah, and Owen, you um, as much as you you love a certain James Milner, you are gonna be trying to argue a different point today. But how are you doing today? Excited for your first debate room stream? Yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. It's gonna be fantastic. Um, I've just been on NFT transferring spaces, so straight on. Um, d- doing the shift tonight, and um, yeah, but, you know, I can't lose this one, can I? I really can't lose this one at all. Uh, I should put in the comments now. If I lose this, I can't really show my face ever again on the stream. Um, <laughs> if we're being totally real, so yeah, I've got to try and try my best here. Yeah, definitely. But we're going to start with opening arguments for this one, Jack. Uh, Jack, we're going to start with you. I, we, we, I had to set out and I just messed it, but Jack, <laughs> you're going to start your opening arguments. Obviously, this stream today is about, is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain the best right-sided midfielder at the club? Obviously, Liverpool are not short of death. But, oh, there's a motorbike going by. Apologies if you hear that. Um, But, Jack, I'm going to let you open with why you think Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is the best right-sided midfielder at the club. Thank you, Charlie, for that setup. Um, It's a very interesting debate. Um probably only stimulated by me. I'm, I'm sure there's probably about 80 to 90% acceptance amongst the Liverpool fan base that he is, um, he should not even have to leave. Not even that he's a decent option in the midfield, let alone best in the right side, et cetera, midfield option. But I'm, I'm confident I can let you at least see my perspective today. Whether or not you agree with me, that's up to you. I think I want to start off by saying, what is the goal of this right central midfield player? What did Klopp envision when he wanted to kind of bring in new players to this side? When Oxley Chamberlain played at Arsenal, he's kind of a wide player, a wing back, a forward, in variety of positions that utilized his, his explosiveness, his creativity from out wide. When he moved to Liverpool, he rejected higher wages from Chelsea because he wanted to play under Klopp. He wanted to play in a different system. I believe that system was really kind of not even, I, I don't want to say it was built exclusively for Oxley Chamberlain because that'd be just kind of a lie. But they definitely viewed him as the potential right central, right-sided central midfield option. The qualities he possesses, and he's shown them in glimpses this season when he's been given the opportunity, ability to spray passes from range, carry the ball from deep, to be very progressive and creative in the midfield, and he's got a decent shot on him. He didn't score a great long-distance goal like he did in that City match a few years ago, but he's still got that in his locker, a bit of that ability to always kind of have that. So what he offers in that right central midfield position is different than any other player in my eyes. And it's an option that kind of makes us more dynamic and more difficult for lower blocks to deal with whether or not he gets into the starting 11 next season remains to be seen, but I'll, I'll leave it there before we kind of carry on further. Yeah. And Owen, you're open an argument for why Alex Oxley Chamberlain isn't the best right side of midfielder at the club. Oxley Chamberlain shouldn't even be at the club. He should be stoked this summer. Um, even if it's £10 million, pounds, he should be gone. There's no doubt about it. I'd rather Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Um, I, I do think we need to bring in a midfielder, regardless of whether Oxley is or goes. Um, but he 100% should be leaving this summer. Um, last season, he showed that he's ineffective, even when he's fit and um, not injured. He can't put any rhythm together, and he struggles to put in any real half-decent performances. Um He's not particularly good at passing. He loses the ball, he's sloppy. Um, his attitude isn't particularly great when he's on, been on the pitch. Uh, he doesn't work particularly hard. So I don't know why we're still keeping him. He, he takes these long shots that end up in Rose Ed. There's, there's absolutely no need for him to be at the club. And ultimately, it's time for him to move on and find his next club, wherever that may be. So there are our open arguments. Um Again, guys, 27 people in here. Make sure you do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I am now going to open the poll. Uh, Jack wanted uh, wanted to give give you guys his opening argument before we we open the poll. 
but the poll is now open um, on the channel, so make sure you go and vote yes or no on if you think that he is. But it's Jack. I'm, I'm going to come to you first. Liverpool are not short of depth in there in their midfield. I mean, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, James Milner, Jordan Henderson. I'm going to go mainly with the right-sided ones who have played them. I'm going to really cover Thiago and Fabinho because I think we can all agree that they are much better. Uh, Navi Keita as well has played there. But Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, look, he had a, a great start to his Liverpool career. The injury really did hamper it. And uh, we, uh, we've seen people call him, you know, a bit of a momentum player. Do you, are you in that field? Do you think maybe if he gets a string of games together, he can he can return to his former glory? I hundred percent believe so. Um, I think if you look at kind of this season, the most recent Alexander or Oxlade Chamberlain we've seen. I always want to say Alexander Arnold because I want to say Alex, and then I mentioned Alexander Arnold. Um, so I'm probably gonna do that a few more times this stream. But when you looked at him, kind of in that that October, November, December window when he played the most, and then January when Afcon. Um, came around and we lost Salamani and Keita and he was really needed. He performed in some big matches. I will concede he started the Leicester and, and West Ham matches that we fell in the in the league, which played a big role in our eventual title defeat. So I don't disagree that there are flaws in terms of his ability to control and be a tempo controller, but that's not why I think he's the best right center mid option at the club. You know, I agree that with the momentum he could I think showcase a lot more of his skill set, a lot more of his momentum. And I think that that's just the case, you know, with any player. He made 30 appearances in his first season for Liverpool, then tore his ACL, I believe. It was a cruciate ligament injury, regardless of what it was. And that obviously set him back loads. But since the 2020 2021 season, he's had one injury and he missed, I think, three matches because of it. So he's not had a fitness issue. It's been a mere selection issue in the last two seasons. And, and that's been an interesting one for me about Klopp and his insistence to to not play him down the stretch of that last season. Um, I'm not sure if it's an attitude issue as Owen suggested. I, I can't speak to 100% his attitude in training or whatnot. Um, he made a very nice uh, Twitter post about how he's he's already working in training. So clearly he's a, he's a hard worker there. So that was in the Nottingham Forest. When he got substituted off, it looked like he was having to go at Klopp and um not many people do that to clock really do they they always giving him a hug so kind of shows maybe that he isn't kind of as he's shown out to be in the dressing room let's say i think uh it, it's you don't want to see that obviously like on the pitch because then you kind of have almost that pulling apart but i don't think that having people who disagree with Klopp or get a little animated i i, I personally loved it when Mane and sal would get pissed off when they were subbed off because you were subbed off for a reason um but that's a separate discussion for separate players who have been showing more for Liverpool than than Oxlade has. Um, I think, it, and you mentioned some of the other guys, Charlie, that could occupy that right center mid spot. Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, kind of. Naby Cates has been the guy who's played there predominantly, and Jordan Henderson. In my eyes, what you would want from a right center mid, all of them lack one element of that somewhere. I think that I think Ox still has more explosiveness than than Elliott does, even though after the injuries. I think that he's got more ability to go out wide and be creative than Jordan Henderson does. I think in terms of Naby Keita, he's the one who I really would toss in that debate and say that's a pretty pretty good one. But I prefer Naby Keita off on the left. I think the best situation for Liverpool is Naby Keita as the backup for Thiago at the left center mid spot because that really kind of alleviates the need of having both of them fit at one time to have a great midfield. I think Oxlade in that right center mid spot is, is a really, really solid option he kind of just offers you everything in terms of what he has on his locker and on his does day he, does he though on his day he gives the ball away how many times get, get out your stats again let's get the stats out baby can we do that because i want to see that i mean, i'm getting them out they're they're not as bad as some may suggest he's in the 99th percentile can you bring yellow them up cards. on the screen so everyone can see it yellow can you cards. Do that? i'm not sure if I, I actually did not figure out how to share my screen which i should have done for this for this stream because that would have been very nice a, 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 a we, we'll trust your words, Jack. Hey, you're, you're a trustworthy guy. I wouldn't lie about the stats. Maybe my opinions are a bit dodgy, but you know, what were you looking for, Owen, in terms of the stats? The defensive aspects, because I think at the end of the day, as a centre midfielder, a large part of the game is about defending. Mm -hmm. um, if you're kind of playing in Gerrard sort of position, and I think obviously he's nowhere near the ability of Steven Gerrard, but if you look at it in, in some aspects, um, in terms of the way he plays and or attempts to play the game, 
um, is kind of similar to Gerard in that aspect. Yeah, I mean, look, it, I think the misconception people have when I, when I make this take is that I'm trying to shoehorn Oxford Chamberlain into an exclusively box to box eight like center midfield role that's not his game that's not what he's best at but what oxlade allows you to do with your system is have him be much more progressive much more aggressive in the pressure pressing him and tiago are the two best pressers at the club statistically he completes i think 36 percent of his presses let me get the stat i had it up just a moment ago um in terms of pressures per 90 minutes he completes 20 which in terms of people who qualify is right up there with everyone else and he completes 36 percent of them which is just behind milner your boy Owen, uh, Joe Gomez, who had a, a much smaller sample size, and then Tiago, who had just a one tenth of a percent better pressing success rate. So when I look at Oxley, what he can do is he can kind of sometimes be the guy pressing up front. He commits a lot of tackles, and in terms of his defensive actions that he makes, in terms of what he does, there's a lot of holes in it. In terms of if you look at the tackles, right, just the raw tackles, he plays two point four per ninety. But he's in the 99th percentile for a tackles in the attacking third for midfielders. So he's one of the only guys in the world that are, I'm sorry, this, this comment is throwing me off because it's a phenomenal comment. This is just the, one of the greatest comments I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's just totally thrown me through a loop. Um, Mate, that, go back to the presses though. Milner and Ox are the top two. Milner, Thiago, Ox are the top three in terms of Thiago, uh, okay. successful pressures. I was going to say because... Look at Ox and Milner. They're both kind of bench players. They come on 60, 70th minute whenever they do play, mainly. So they're going to be full of energy against the sort of worn defence. So you kind of more expect that. Thiago, fair enough. But I think, yeah, with, with I Ox. Mean, I want to bring something up really quickly. This yeah. last game for Liverpool this season was that Nottingham Forest game. Um, you know, when he, when he did have the fit of Klopp when he brought off... I thought he deservedly come off. I remember that game quite vividly. He was very, very bad for us. Most of his, if not, I think 25% of the games he's played this season have all been off the bench. Jürgen Klopp did say, however, in May when he wasn't playing, he said, I hate myself for not bringing an Oxley chamberlain on tonight. He's such a good player, but we have to figure out how it works together. I feel like that's Klopp admitting that Oxley chamberlain doesn't fit into Liverpool's system at all. Um, I know I'm meant to be sitting on a fence here. It's very yeah. hard considering the, the topic. Um, <laughs> but Jack, how do you how do you justify all the games that he was sat out for? I mean, there was a lot less inexperienced players who were coming on for Ox in the crunch game. You know, we were fighting for the league every game, and and Ox was was never selected by Klopp. Mm -hmm. I I don't really have an explanation for it because it's it baffles me as well. It's one of the things that I just did not get. But I think if I'm pulling it up right now because I want to make sure I get it get it correct before I say anything. But um, the last match that that Harvey Elliott played was I mean he, he played sparingly throughout the back end of that season. You know the last one for him besides the Southampton match and the Leicester match. Um, oh, sorry, let me let me let me bring that back again. Because I, I'm I'm poorly phrasing this. He played just three times for Liverpool. Wow, I am just cannot read these stats right here. These are the ugliest. The way they they word the dates in Britain is so confusing for dumb Americans like me. So I'm just going to ignore that. Harvey Elliott barely played on the stretch of last season. Is the point I'm making, and that was just because of selection. That was because of of other options being preferred in all these crunch matches. That's the only explanation I can really have for why Oxley didn't play much on the stretch. I wouldn't be surprised if it was because of the the issues after that Nottingham Forest match. Um, and if Klopp just came to not trust him, which I think is a situation right now, um, then then that's just um, that's that doesn't change. I think my argument, my argument isn't that he will be the best performer in that right center mid spot or that he will play there so much next season. It's simply that I think his profile is perfect for that position. And what he offers is perfect for that. And I know it's very much like a, a idealist and a, a, a like a not a poor way of arguing it, but I'm kind of going into the middle ground um, by saying he is the best, but he isn't isn't showing it. Um, but I just think what what you see from him is just different from other guys. He's almost like the only guy that I could see that could play with the creativity of a number ten, but also not sacrificing the shape of the four three three by playing him in that right center mid eight spot. But honestly, I don't really think there is a 
any sort of rebuttal for the point you made, Charlie, that he didn't play on the rest of the season because he wasn't trusted for one reason or another. Yeah, I mean, oh, and there's, uh, as much as, you know, there's been a lot of criticism of Oxlade Chamberlain, uh, made me, I'd, I'd probably say, the past four-ish months when he, when he wasn't playing after that Nottingham Forest game. When Mohamed Salah, when Naby Keita, when Sadio Mane were away, he, he, he performed, he stepped up for Liverpool. Um, and, you know, we, we went through that game, that full run unbeaten. I think we might have won every single game. Uh, I can't remember to exactly. But he does step up when needed. It it does just seem, you know, when he comes off the bench, maybe he's not he's not as as effective to to when he starts. Do, do you think that might be a factor to it, or do you think he is just he's just poor? I remember the Crystal Palace game away, and he scored in that game. He's actually pretty played pretty well. Um, in fairness to him, but I just think he's too inconsistent. Look, we're Liverpool. And we're trying to go for league titles, and there's too many games where he's having off games, and that you can't be making excuses for yourself at this top level. Um, it's all right if you're playing for a mid table team, you can have those days, it's fair enough. But playing for a top two league side, going for Champions League, going for League Cup, FA Cup, going for every competition possible, um, obviously, there will be games there where you'll come in, even if it's in the early stage of the FA Cup, League Cup, um, you will get minutes there, you would have thought, but. He's just not reliable. Klopp can't go to him and bring him on the Champions League final. I know that's a big game, but even in the run into the Premier League, like finale day, um, there was no kind of belief that Ox would come in and just give us off, offer us anything. There was no kind of optimism, optimism around kind of Ox, and it's just dull. It's very dull around Ox, and I think he just needs to escape that cycle. I think he needs a move for his confidence. Um, just maybe a new setting, a new surrounding. I think that would do him worlds of good. And like, even if he went to a West Ham and start performing um, and we sold him for 10, 15 million, it wouldn't be a bad deal for us because I think, yeah, if you play Ox every single game, he's going to eventually maybe turn out half all right. Um, but we haven't got X amount of games to waste. Look, if you see Man City, they don't waste many games. They don't drop points. So we have to kind of take advantage of every single minute possible and make sure we don't drop any points. And with Ox in the sides, you can't guarantee that whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, one thing I, I want to go back to, but really quickly, if you are new to the stream, make sure you do leave a like on the video. There's also a poll in the live chat for if you agree with Owen or Jack. Make sure you do vote on that and subscribe if you are new for you know videos like this. We stream every single day, I think. We've got to be up there on three, four months streaming every single day now, so content every single day. But one thing I want to go back to is is the options. Owen, I'll, I'll let you start on this. We know you love James Milner. Jordan Henderson has played every uh, played the most games for Liverpool last season. He's our best player. I mean, you know, we've. I, I'm not a fan of Jordan Henderson. Um, I know I, I'm trying to be. I, I'm not debating this. Um, Charlie, you're picking up some like major major anti Liverpool oh, positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, Don't worry. After yeah. the Salah one, you're getting destroyed in the comments of that video. The live <laughs> chat supported you. The comments yeah, were who won? Yeah, that's what I thought. All the Lakers. Big up the Lakers. But Jordan Henderson was our best player in the Champions League final. Is, and he got taken off by Klopp. Is what Jordan Henderson about? better than Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain? Because this is what Jack, Jack is basically saying, that Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is better suited than, than Jordan Henderson and James Milner in that right side position. Do you, do you? I know you don't agree with him, but why don't you agree with him? Jordan Henderson is one of the most all-rounded players in the Premier League. He hasn't got the most amount of pace, um, but apart from that, yeah, he's got pretty much everything. He's got the passing, he can dictate a game, um, he can control a game, he can sit in, he can do virtually everything for a Premier League midfielder, and he's 32 years of age now. So... He's had the longevity as well. He's been phenomenal for us over the last few years. Without John Henderson, we wouldn't have been in the shout for a Premier League or Champions League um, title at all. So like, he's massively underrated within the fan base and he's going to go down as the Liverpool legend. People have said whether he's in the sort of same bracket as Steven Gerrard and I wouldn't be totally opposed to that at all, I think. By the time, two, three years' time, but when he does hang up his boots um, and make more appearances, hopefully he'll win another Champions League, Premier League, few more trophies to the cabinet, I'm sure he'll be up there. And Oxley chamberlain he's just he's nowhere near the level of John Henson. And he's even five years younger as well. Um, so 
I, I would take Milner over Oxlade Chamberlain as well, um, just because you've got that reliability, you know what you're getting, you've got the consistency, um, and yeah, you've got a bit of passion there as well, a bit of desire, a bit of um, leadership, which at the end of the day, Klopp loves it, and there's a reason why because it helps the team massively with the press. The only player that I, in that right center mid spot that I would argue for Ox is Nabi Keita. Um, I just think that you the qualities you mentioned in Henderson can control a match, can sit in. Those are great qualities for a six against a low block. You don't want him kind of being dragged into these attacking positions because he doesn't have the technical proficiency in tight spaces, linking up with the forwards. He's got a decent amount of ability to kind of ping some long passes. His crosses, if he gets enough of a volume of them, he can put it into a few decent ones. But he's wasteful in that sense at times. So I prefer him as the backup six behind Fabinho with... So I, I am the true opinion that I have is that Ox should not be our only option to right center mid. I think he's our best profile there, but we need someone like Oxy Chamberlain, who when he gets the ball out wide, he's an actual threat. Henderson isn't that. Nabi Keita isn't really the best creator from the touchline versus Oxy Chamberlain. He played as a winger. He can play as a right winger, so he's comfortable in those wide spaces, those central spaces. And I think people underrate his ability to control a match. I, I don't think that he's as good as Henderson or Thiago in that regard, but it, what he brings to Liverpool isn't those things. That's not what, what you have him in the match for. You have him for his the, the dynamic you can't buy in the transfer market, that quote from Klopp. You know, he's so different from the other Liverpool midfielders because he was almost a forward converted into a midfielder. It's like if Firmino was converted into a right center midfield option who was able to adopt those spaces. I, I think, for me at least, Liverpool's best midfield shouldn't have Kate in that right center mid spot. He should be the backup in the left side of it. I, I just, I, and I, I think that this is the really big what if take, but if he didn't have that ACL injury, there's a much, much, much different player we're talking about, obviously. And that's, that's a very big, like, duh. He had two functioning knees, he'd be a better player. But like, what we were, could have seen if he developed over the years without having a major setback like that, where he missed practically the entire 2018-19 season. He, I think he made just two appearances for like 20 minutes. So he didn't. He, he was a non-factor that season. So I, I that is a very sad injury. That I think is, is that's I think a bit underrated. Is is when you think about players who really have been devastated by injuries. I think it's Oxley is one of the for Liverpool at least um, one of the most most devastated guys in recent years in that regard. So. I disagree with what you say there about the injury affecting him because I think he lacks a footballing brain. I think he lacks that common sense when it comes into the positions. Yeah, I, I really do think that in decision making in the final third, um, he's very, very wasteful, uh, gives the ball away a lot. Um, so I don't agree there that that injury really affected him. I think it's more kind of the mental side of it. And you can't really train an attacking midfielder like Klopp. Obviously, you can help him start a play and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, final third, it's up to him. To do that yeah i i just think that i don't disagree that his decision making his, his decision making has been inconsistent but i think it's also a product of lack of game time and the fact that when he's out there for those few moments he has to shine he has to prove to Klopp i'm i can be a difference maker so that's why you see him taking those those pot shots from distance because he's got those in his locker when he just kind of hits them like with the laces a lot of a lot of you know power in them um he's the only guy who can really kind of take that shot at liverpool like Trent kind of can, but those always end up in Rosie. Um, Tiago, Tiago, he can, but he doesn't. He doesn't like to. But the thing is, like when Tiago picks up the ball, he's not driving at you to score a goal. Even having that threat forces def defenses to think differently. And so when you see Oxley Chamberlain can take a man on, he can try and take a shot. That means you have to step to him differently than you would for Jordan Henderson. Where Henderson, you got to stay in front of him. You kind of you can back off, give him a bit of space because he's not going to create with that little bit of space you give him. That's, I think, what the big difference is for, for Oxlade is that he can do different things than other, other Liverpool midfielders can. Like, even Naby Keita, I don't think, can create like from a standing position like, like Oxlade can. Um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Naby, right? Like, I, I've kind of cooled on him a little bit from being like his biggest defender. But um, I don't know. I just kind of, I'm, I'm very, very big, big, big protector of a lot of Liverpool midfielders, I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, there's there's been a lot of discussion about selling him. 
Uh, Jack, I'll, I'll I'll bring it to you. He's got one year left on his contract. You're you're saying he's the best right sided midfielder we've got. You know, obviously Klopp started Harvey Elliott there. Jordan Henderson's played there pretty much all season. There's been a, a lot of talk about signing a midfielder, which looks like it doesn't happen. So, in that sense, should we be selling Oxley Chamberlain if if you do think he is he is that good? So. I think if we, I I kind of agree with with Owen's comment that a move would help him a lot. Um, I think our system offers him the best chance to thrive, to really showcase all of his abilities, rather than he plays a right wing or he showcases some of them. I don't even know a right wing back, a right back. I think that's probably where you where you'd want to play him only. Um, so for him, at least, a move wouldn't be a terrible idea. He would get much more game time at a, a, a slower down in the Premier League side. For Liverpool, though, if we're not going to sign a replacement, what's the point? Because then you're just reducing your options. And people could argue, yeah, you know, gives more game time to Elliott and Jones and, and Carvalho potentially. But what if they're not ready? Like, what have they shown that has made you think, all right, they are ready? And I, I for me, at least, I think Elliott has far more potential than Oxid ever did. Same with Curtis Jones in my eyes, but they don't have that. They haven't shown it yet. They haven't shown it like Oxlade has. And I don't think they're there yet. You have a guy who's, it's tough to call this Oxlade's prime, but it's his, his physical prime, basically. He's nearing his late 30s or late 20s. He's almost 30 years old, is he not? Um, something like that. Um, how old is he? When's his birthday? 27, is it? He's, uh, I think he's 28. Maybe. He's 28, turns 29 on August 15th. So he's... Not, he's He'll he's, be 29 when the season is yeah, yeah, so he's... I th- For me, to kind of answer your question, Charlie, in a very roundabout manner, we should sign someone if we sell him. And if we're not sign- signing anybody, it makes no sense to sell him. So I, I, I would keep him personally because I think, again, I agree with Klopp's comment. You can't buy a player with Ox's dynamic in the market because they don't really exist anywhere. And if they did exist, they would be 80 million pounds plus. Like Jude Bellingham is different than Oxley Chamberlain, but he's the only guy who could really advance Liverpool with a different style of play in that right center mid spot. So, Owen, I want to ask you something. I might be starting another completely different debate. Boring Carriers, who I think it is very unfair to judge that transfer, is Alex Oxley Chamberlain Jurgen Klopp's worst transfer considering? the transfer fee and the wages that he's on i was just thinking that now i was literally just in my mind i kid you not and i was thinking it between cater and ox to be honest with you um because carries it was like a few million yeah he cost us a champions league final but at the end of the day and he, and, and he was that. good before that champions league final i will argue yeah. that till the absolute death he was class before the champions league final and as you said four million as well uh but sorry go on yeah, I know. I think it's probably Nabi Keita, if we're being real. Um, 55 million Abby was, Ox 40 to 50 million more. Um, and yeah, they, they're both as bad as each other in reality. Um, they've both offered nothing. They're both injury prone. They're both absolutely just not good footballers at all, in my opinion. Um, in the final thirds, so they're both they're very inconsistent players. And for a team like Liverpool, we need someone who's going to go out there every week and perform and players like Henderson, Milner, Fabinho, Thiago, they're players Klopp can rely on. He goes to them all the time in the big games and there's a reason for it. You know, people like to see um, compilations of Cater and Ox doing back heels in their own third of the, of the pitch. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter if they're being ineffective and yeah, you get all the stats out and it's all green for them, but it doesn't mean anything when you watch the game and you see how much they really contribute. Yeah, I, I mean, Jack, it's, it's something that I've thought about a lot. I like Ox as a personality. I think he's a great guy. But the one thing I always seem to think is he just doesn't know his position. You know, he's played at Arsenal, both wing-backs. He's played on the wing. You know, it's it, for me, it, you know, even though you are saying, you know, his, his style maybe suits Liverpool's right side of midfield a lot more, I still think that's not even his right position, and I don't know what his best position is. I, that's bad considering he's been at the club now for yeah. five years, isn't it? I don't disagree. Like he, it's a combination of the injury, his inability to kind of really cement a place in the eleven, um, 
so yeah, I, I definitely agree that he's not got a great niche in the squad. He kind of, I think he doesn't have the 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 time in the bank, the experience in the bank to command that right center mid spot through tough times. And he then has to kind of prove himself when he does play. Um, in terms of like the question in regards to like worst transfers. Um, and it's not even a case of the fact that the transfers of Ox, Kate, and I would toss Shakiri in there. I think that's a bit of a more controversial one. Um, him less so than the other two because he wasn't as much money, clearly. But um, for me, I'm I'm looking at those guys as the worst transfers in the Klopp era. Because Shakiri. every other... I th- I think he just didn't do much, and that's not even like a the transfer was unbelievable in the, in the games he played. He was, and it's not that I, again. It's it's him and Minamino. I think are on a similar tier. We should do actually a tier rank of Liverpool science. That'd be a very interesting video because I would put like Minamino and Shakiri as like did their job tier, like they just did their job. I wasn't blown away. I think Naby Kate and Oxley Chamberlain both underperformed, and again. Injuries. I'm not saying they're they're bad players or they just didn't work hard enough. They had injuries that were unfortunate that set them back. But yeah, I would have him and Keita as the two worst transfers of the club era. I mean, I would just like to add on neither of them have had any injuries yeah. in the last season. They've so. they've cleaned that up, but I think the fact of the matter is like they also have been they haven't developed as players basically for the last three years because they've been just battling injuries and trying to stay fit. So they haven't been able to be like, all right, so I'm able to play week in, week out. Let's develop my game a little bit. Let's get a little bit more into my repertoire. They've been just kind of battling and to, to stay the same level and not regress. So it's really hard to advance your game. So like they've basically been the same players for the last few years. And that's kind of, I think, Klopp probably has looked at his players and says, all right, I've seen Mo, I've seen Salah, I've seen Virgil, I've seen Trent, I've seen Robertson, I've seen Kostas, all I think there's a few guys I'm tossing out there, all significantly up their game in the last two, three, four years, week in, week out, over the months, over the years, versus you guys have been kind of plateauing. And harsh as it may be because of the injuries, that's the case. They haven't improved their game. Um, so like you think about the Nabi Keita that we signed, you wanted him to take a leap up. You wanted him to really kind of showcase that. He hasn't even been able to showcase the Nabi Keita we signed. He's been almost a step down from that um, his entire career. Oxlade had a little bit of a leap for us at times. So maybe Keita is the worst transfer for the Klopp era, just because we spent so much money on him and he just did not pan out. I think that's a great point you make there about um, the players developing because it's very, very true. Literally every Liverpool player, at least in the starting eleven, since we've signed them, we don't just buy the players, world-class players. We, we improve them so much. We develop them where in contrast to like a team like Man United, for example, with Sancho, Ronaldo, or Fernandez. Well, Fernandez, he was all right when he came in, but mm-hmm. a lot of the players they bring in and then they don't get better. They don't improve. Um, and that's the main thing when it comes to transfers. You don't just want to bring in world-class players. You want to help them develop every day in training. So, yeah, it, it's weird how with Cater and Ox, maybe their injuries have kind of stopped them from being able to do that. But I don't think we should do make too many excuses for them for sure i mean they're paid millions of millions of pounds exactly. um, to play the sport um and so you got to hold them at high standards because like if if i didn't become a much better football player in the last two years it's like okay who gives who, who cares i got some <laughs> rando like these guys need to needed to improve their game and like i don't even know if they could have handled their liverpool careers better because sometimes it's just injuries are just out of your hands that's just the hand you're dealt um, so I, 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 for, for me, like we should be signing a midfielder because he's got the right profile, but I don't think he's the right player to carry that because he's got the mental issues, the decision making's not there. The physicality has been regressing. I think he, I, I think if you were able to make a right center mid in a lab, that could be the best for Liverpool. A lot of the qualities would overlap with Oxley Chamberlain's. The more so than any other player, like you made a Venn diagram of like one circle is perfect right center mid, and the other ones, other circles in Venn diagram are Liverpool midfielders. Oxford would have the most overlap with them, with the perfect one. But I just don't know if his performances on the field will be able to, to showcase that. Um, and I think it's also it'd be harsh on Henderson to play him in that right side at eight spot because I agree with you, Owen. He's a class player still. There's still a great player in there. But I just don't think he's capable of taking those advanced positions 
to, to lead us forward. He's a very consistent player that will keep us in the title race, but I want him in a, in a, in a lesser role. He can play there sometimes, but if he's depended on for as many matches as he played last year, I'm going to pull up the exact number. He played, how many matches did he play? So you'd want him as like the backup to Fabinho then in that kind of sitting role. I would love him as that backup at backup DM because that means we could kind of advance and put some money into having uh, another eight, another two eights I think we could really use. Um, but are we going to spend the money though? Or oh, if we go to the 4 3 one though, imagine that, then you can kind of do that, can't you? Have Henson and Fabinho, then it's kind of like, where's Thiago? Well, maybe if, because Thiago can't play every game now, he's like 31, maybe... You do that when Tiago can't play, you do that the 43 one and then have Firmino or Carvalho, whoever, or Tavio, if he's coming in, then yeah. One, one thing I'd I'd be interested to see is obviously before before that Roma injury, Ox was very predominant in, in Liverpool's midfield. I'd like to see his stats paired up with, you know, maybe someone people who we are interested in signing because there was gate there were, I remember the Newcastle game where he got that assist for Salah. He was really good in that game. It was a few stand the West Ham game as well when we were the, the Orangers when I think that might have been his first goal. So you know it's look it, we're being harsh on Ox now, but it, it it's it's not unfair to say he was a much better player before his ACL. I don't I don't think that's a, an unpopular opinion. You know some players bounce back. We've seen Joe Gomez bounce back from it twice. Yeah, Alex Oxley Chamberlain. You know he said it was one of his darkest days. He and you know he maybe just didn't bounce back as much but unless anyone well you can say it in your closing arguments but we're gonna gonna wrap this up with a closing closing argument but before that the chat I, jack i'm sorry to tell you but i think this might be a lost cause uh you know maybe wait for jack's closing argument and um, to vote but if you are okay we don't you know, you're getting banned, Ooh, that's a nice that's a nice account i like I that uh, block user. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, get voting in the live chat, guys, uh, if you think Oxley Chamberlain is the best right side of midfielder at the club. Also, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not. But Jack, take it away with your closed argument. I kind of back myself a little bit down from my earlier bullish stances, kind of saying that I don't think Ox can perform at the level needed to play that right center mid spot. But I, I, I'll stand by what I've said all stream and what I've what I truly believe yesterday's stream was um, a bit of a, a bit of a crazy, a silly one. Um, but I do think he has the best profile to play that right center mid spot. I think he, there's a player in there. I don't know if we can scratch the surface and get him back out. But I, I really do think that what Ox can offer is unique to any other midfielder that we have. And whether it's the starting right center mid position, whether he's sold in the summer, he needs to play some sort of role in the next 12 months either that is money in the bank to sign another right center mid who can push us forward or he's playing that role more than he did last season i think it makes no sense to put him in some weird middle ground where he just runs his contract down because it just it helps nobody so for me at least i think that that the player ox could have been he could have been a very very good player in that right center mid he could have been world class as a midfielder had he not had that major injury, had he had several years of development under Klopp. Um, that didn't happen, though. So that's a case of of what you would have believed. Um, so I, I, I'll just end it on saying that I think that Ox will be a case of what could have been. Um, and that's a bit sad, but I think he'll have a lot of trophies in the bank, a lot of big moments um, that he will be able to lean back on. Um, so I'm very interested with what happens next because it's a – it's an interesting problem to have because there's a lot of there's a lot of potential there um, for either a different direction or keeping it the same as last year because last year we were close in titles um, for four of them so you can't really say we got it wrong last year by not playing Oxley down the stretch but interesting interesting if uh, what happens next yeah I mean Owen I don't think you have to say much but I'll let you have your closing argument I respect what Jack said, um, and I like how he stood by it the whole time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think ahead of the new season, I think Klopp needs to tell Ox what's going to happen. I think he needs to make sure he understands the role he's going to play and that there's not kind of a miscommunication there. Um, 
otherwise that could cause bad blood for sure. And I think Ox will get frustrated if he doesn't get a lot of game time, which I don't think he will get. Um, which makes me think that just even even alone him out for the season or I don't know just anything because um, you don't want to have someone like that in the changing room who's getting a bad attitude or is unhappy at the club doesn't want to be at the club at the end of the day it's Liverpool every player should want to be there hungry to fight for a place and like we should just bring in a player um, who's going to want to be there because at the end of the day we need a midfielder and yeah there's, there's options out there for sure Otavio from Porto rumours coming in now over the last sort of hour or so that we are interested in him like 34 million i think it was said so 34 10 mil for ox 24 i know it doesn't quite work like that but he's on high wages as ox so Very maybe true. they would be like for like like i think it's a win-win and he's not just a stop gap though otavia i think he's one for the future um but at the same time he's not loads of money so you can still go ahead next season and by a Bellingham or whoever you want. I know we went for Schumann knee this um, summer, but obviously went to Real Madrid. So yeah, it's an interesting one and we'll see. Octavio is 27. So I think one for the future might be a bit pushing it, but I see where you're coming from. Well, you yeah, get, you can get four or five years out of him. Yeah. Um, but I saw this comment. Very funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but quite, quite realistic. <laughs> um, realistic. Everyone I, hates I, I, uh, he, he backs up, uh, you know, maybe Paul Pogba's or Naby Keita, <laughs> Jordan Henderson, James Milner, love. But, uh, Jack, I'm sorry, I'm going to end the poll. I'm not going to give us the five minutes. We did agree before the stream if Jack got 30%, he won. I will have the final result here. Is Alex Oxley chamberlain the best right-sided midfielder at the club? Yes, is 25%. Oh, and no is 75 pretty or oh, 70 oh that's weird there's, there's one percent one percent broken um oh, bear with me i'm trying to block what this sex thing um yeah for some reason no is 74 percent and yes is 25 so for somehow one percent got lost but guys i hope everybody enjoyed two cases I think, of fraud two cases yeah. of fraud and, and the salad stream Charlie voted yes. I would. I, I am going to say this right now. You do not vote on it, and it highlights the one that's winning. So, okay, you maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> maybe. But I think we can all agree we need a right sided midfielder. That is not a debate that any Liverpool fan on this channel is going to have. Um, we need a right sided midfielder. Oxley Chamberlain could probably be sold, and it wouldn't be a massive miss, um, too. But I thought I'd get my opinions out there in the last second. Apologies, Jack. But <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, make sure you do leave a like on the video. Also, subscribe. Uh, this is how we're going to be doing debate rooms from now on. I am in the works of getting a Gerard Skulls. Lampard won, um, so that'll be very fun. It'll either be next week or the week after, so keep an eye out for that. But everyone who joined us today, thank you so much.